gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired man and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. And to all you present here in the room and also you present on Zoom, I invite you to pray with me. May the words of my heart, of my mouth, and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock, our redeemer, our God who calls us to follow. Amen. Last week, I started my sermon with drawing our attention to the words that are so often spoken by many characters in the Bible when God calls them, which are, here I am, here I am, God. And several people from among you uh, mentioned to me that they enjoyed that focus and, so, and that it was helpful, and so I would like to keep going on that theme again today. What I said last week, if you weren't here or if you, you, you missed it, is that when God calls many people in the Bible, as I said, like Moses or Mary, or in our case, in our readings today, Jonah and those disciples who are called right from their fishing boats along the lake, when God calls people and draws attention to them, their response could be, God, choose someone else. Or it could be, I'm not available. Or it could be, I'm not really together enough in my life to go into your service. Or it could be, I'm too compromised and confused. My life is too chaotic. And there's all these ways that each one of us can discount God's calling in our lives. But did you hear the prayer of the day this morning? Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and you accept us in your service. And so, accepting that God accepts you in God's service, that is, another name for that is faith. The power of faith is to overcome all those excuses, all those prerequisites, all those ways we would try to deny or excuse ourselves from being worthy for God's service. For saints and sinners as you are, all of you, like Jonah, like Mary and Moses, like the, 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 the fishermen by the Sea of Galilee, you are all called in God's service. And our, our response is to say, here I am, and you accept me, O God, to be your servant. So that was the focus of last week. And just to develop it a bit more, I want to make brief mention of a comparison with something else that is um, quite prevalent and popular in our society, which people turn to as a path for spiritual growth. So on the one hand, I'm talking about the Bible and our response to say, here I am as God's servants, where we are called, wherever we are. And on the other hand, I want to compare it with practices that people do, which I think are very helpful. And I'm not trying to cast a negative comparison, but just to show how it's different, which is practices of meditation, practices of mindfulness. So in the stress, in the burdens of life, in the pressures you hold in your body from work and from all the other stresses you carry, usually to become mindful or to meditate is to accept everything as present, be present to your breath, be present to whatever emotions you have, and to come to a place of serenity. And there's much that is admirable in that practice. And, but what is different, I just want to say, is that 
a meditation practice, a mindfulness practice, with all its appeal, is anonymous. You, your, your own voice, your own story, who the specific person you are doesn't really matter. You can be mindful and present to the universe like anyone else. The, the practice of saying, here I am as God's servant, though, your specific name matters. Your specific story matters. Your specific story is brought into the story that God is unfolding in your life and in those around you where you're called to have service. And so that's what's different, is that once, a, once mindfulness and meditation, once a feeling of serenity is there, it kind of evaporates and goes. But God's call, which is given to all of you, all of us in our baptism, God's call goes with you and continues to call you, even when you forget or even when you're clouded in your focus, it comes back. And that's what makes it a little bit different. You're in an ongoing dialogue with God to say, here I am. And it's the God of the Bible, the God of our faith, the God that we join with all the saints in when we come for communion, who calls you in God's service. And I'd like to, um, that was the second point then, to make the comparison with mindfulness. And the third point here, I, I, I want to just return briefly to the subject of last week, which I think also focused our attention, which was that I, I was so bold to talk about the topic of sex and of sexual ethics in my sermon last week because of the very um, stern reading from the Apostle Paul. And in my sermon last week, I talked about how when we say, here I am, it's starting wherever you are wherever you may be in your life, whether it's an ideal relationship or it is not, or it is confused or in chaos or, as we said, in, in sin. The here I am accepts it. And sometimes when, when we have a, a very conservative understanding of sexual ethics from the past, it can be that unless I'm perfect, unless I'm totally pure, unless I'm ideal, I can't be present to God. And that was the point I tried to make. But, um, I also want to say that when you become here I am to God, you're also accountable, right? And when we're accountable, then all the words that we learn and all the expectations that we hear, for all of us in our confirmation, it's clear in the Ten Commandments, you shall not commit adultery, right? It's in there. And so then when we become here I am to God, we are also made accountable to our spouse, to our partner, to the people we love, to ourself and our integrity. And so I wanted to draw that in case it was, wasn't clear what I was trying to say about that there is the reality of sin, even though our stance as Lutherans is we can always come to God wherever we are, whether we're carrying sin or not, or whether we're confused or not. When you're joined to the body of Christ, the way you live your life with your body, the way you turn with it, the way you eat, the way you, you exercise, the way you bring your strength to others, that matters. We're part of the body of Christ, and your body is joined to the body of Christ. And the third topic I want to, to, to end on today is to go to our gospel reading, which was about work. Because the disciples that Jesus calls, Peter and Andrew, they are working, doing their labor as fishermen, fisherfolk. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. God's call, here I am, and where you point your body and what you do with your work. So, as you, as you know, the gospel story makes it quite dramatic. Jesus says, hey guys, immediately follow me. And they immediately drop their nets and follow Jesus. And it's, it's, it's a very dramatic thing because it's like they leave everything behind. And for us, you know, the 21st century, us and the many centuries since the call of the first disciples, we would say, well, I still have to pay my bills. I still have to take care of my family. I still have to make sure that my health gets taken care of. And this radical sense of just dropping everything to follow Jesus into the unknown. The Lutheran tradition, our tradition, hasn't usually, some other groups like the Mennonites or the Anabaptists have put more emphasis on a very radical break with everything in the world. But for us, it's usually to say, well, wherever you are, where your responsibilities are, where your work is, where there are tasks for you to do and, you know, bills to pay and people to take care of in your family, that is where God is calling you to follow. And that's sometimes hard for us to open our minds to because it's so ordinary, it's so regular, 
It's, it's the here I am to check off all the boxes I need to do, to try to put everything in order. But God is calling you there in the ways that you show up at work or however, whatever work situation you might have. I think of um, the, the varieties of different things. But if, if your work is as a teacher or as a nurse or as a mechanic, that's kind of a clear thing you get to bring to people's lives, right? You fixed this thing. You taught them this lesson. You helped treat this wound. But sometimes the call of God in our work is about who are the people around me? Maybe your work isn't thrilling. I can even think if, if you're in the fast food service industry for a time in your life, there are people alongside you in that work who might also feel like it's demeaning at times. But God might be calling you to notice them, to do something different with them, to, to love them as your neighbor. And suddenly, this place that's so ordinary that we see with our ordinary eyes becomes a place where God is calling us to follow. And the break for us as just like the fishermen, Peter and Andrew, is to believe. We might say, oh, I'm caught up in fixing the nets. I can't believe that God would do anything in my life where I am right now. But that's where we say, here I am, God, in this space, with these people, with what I have. You're calling me to love my neighbor. You're calling me to make a difference. You're calling me to grow in your service. You're drawing me to a story that you're writing with my life. And that for us is good news, wherever we are. Amen.